Today I'm going to speak to you about how spirituality does not need science. Let's check it out. To give you some context to this episode, back in 2012 there was a THINK conference in India and there was a conversation between Sadhguru and Javed Akhtar, the famous poet, lyricist and rationalist. And it's an interesting conversation and it's, there's a lot of funny moments within this conversation having Sadhguru being a, a guru, a spiritual being and having Javad Akta have a discussion, who is a, a very strict rationalist. And it's a great conversation actually, it's a lot of, like I said, a lot of hilarious moments. But there was a part in the conversation which I wanted to talk about, and this is which builds the context of this episode, is that when Sadhguru is trying to discern between a spiritual process as opposed to religion, and also how even modern science validates a lot of these ancient Eastern spiritual beliefs and knowledge. Javed Akhtar made a really important point where, you know, he was being very sarcastic and, and was not very, being very wise about his response, but he made the response that a lot of people who are spiritual people will begin to sing praise when modern science, Western science, materialist science, validates some of their knowledge. And everyone says, oh look, see, see even science says it now, so it must be true. And he makes a good point. Why do spiritual people and spirituality in general and in all of these religions, if they don't come from a particular materialist scientific perspective, why do they, you know, sing from the balcony, sing from the veranda when modern science validates some of their beliefs. In the discussion Javed Akhtar said to Sadhguru, he said, look even now science has accepted it. <laughs> but then he also mentions when science opposes some of their be beliefs, spirituality just throws it out as if it ain't no thing. And so he does raise a good point. And this is a little bit what concerns me when I see well-known spiritual teachers like Sadhguru or the Dalai Lama and these sorts of individuals who use science to validate their own spiritual beliefs. When, when you study, especially Eastern spirituality, when you study the great Eastern traditions, they don't need science. And I'm not saying that Western religions don't need some validation of science because Western religions are built on a different framework than Eastern spirituality, but you have to understand that there is a scientific component to Eastern spirituality which actually makes them complete systems in and of themselves. So when I mention spirituality in this episode, I'm speaking about specifically Eastern spirituality. I'm not speaking about Western religion. That's a whole other argument. But when we look at the Eastern spiritual paths, these paths are complete systems, as I said, in and of themselves. If we look at Vedanta, if we look at classical yoga, if we look at Taoism, if we look at Buddhism, if we look at Sankhya, if we look at Jainism, if we look at all of these Eastern paths and their many variations, and you study them completely, then there's actually no need to have science validate this knowledge because this knowledge goes back thousands of years and a lot of research in consciousness studies and the mind and the body go back far far longer than western materialist science we could go back to one of the first universities in the world nalanda found in the bihar state not far from bodhgaya where the buddha attained enlightenment and that university ancient, so ancient, and they're studying the mind, the body, 
consciousness itself and they are in a sense ahead of the curve and a lot of people in the modern day don't understand that. So when you have specific universities and groups within the East that were there thousands of years ago, you would have to be a little foolish if you didn't think that that knowledge filtered out into the culture and the society and has been built upon since that time, which we actually need to validate in the present day. So Eastern spirituality actually doesn't need the validation of Western science because Western science, science in general, as we think of it in the modern world, is built on a materialist foundation. It's built on materialism as opposed to Eastern spirituality, which holds consciousness as the foundation of life and then studies the world accordingly from that place. So we have extensive studies of the mind within Eastern spirituality, extensive studies of energy and how the body works, and just our general cognition and way of life are the focus of Eastern spirituality as opposed to science, which modern science is starting to catch up to that realm, but has been primarily focused on materialism. So one of the differences in Western science is there's this need for proof. We need proof. We need tangible, physical evidence of the existence of a thing. And well, this opposes Eastern spirituality because first of all, you're talking about things in general and Eastern spirituality often come from the perspective of trying to understand the no thing perspective, what's beyond thinking, what's beyond the idea of t the tangible and stepping more into the experiential realm as opposed to this analytical data-based fact-finding mission that Western science are on. This is why when we look at the great traditions of the East, if we look at Vedanta, classical yoga, Sankhya, Taoism, Buddhism, Jainism, these amazing traditions and many more, they're focused on the experiential realm and they're focused on the tranquility of the mind, bringing peace to the mind and, and then hopefully bringing peace to the world. So the focus is much more internal as opposed to this external view where we are going to cultivate an environment which is comfortable and convenient for us in the thinking that this is going to bring us peace and happiness but what are we finding in the modern day that this is not bringing us peace and happiness and the anxiety and the stress that was always there still exists so the eastern perspective is to tackle the suffering and the anxiety and the stress that we all have which is an internal exploration as opposed to an external exploration which science is focused on. So this is kind of a difference which is hard to bridge between both science and spirituality because both have different starting places, both have different perspectives, uh, different to the other. Even though we could say in a sense that spirituality is much more accepting of what science offers because you know, especially if we look at Buddhism, if we look at Buddhism, Buddhism is very open to new scientific discoveries and they try to understand those scientific discoveries granted through their own perspectives, through their own teachings, but those teachings are not set in stone in some sense. We've seen even the Dalai Lama actually say that, you know, maybe this could be wrong. He has, you know, he has considered some of these things about some of the Buddhist teachings not the Buddha's teachings, but some of the teachings that came after the Buddha on the study of the mind and consciousness. So this difference between science's materialist focused exploration as opposed to the Eastern internal exploration leads to two different outcomes actually, because when we look at the Eastern approach, the spiritual approach, as I mentioned earlier, it's about the complete understanding of oneself in relation to the entire universe and what that means. It, you know, does the mind exist? Does the ego exist? Why do I suffer? How can we have peace in the world? How can I bring peace to my own mind? It's much more on a subtle level. And the outcome of science, because of its materialist focus, 
causes a lot of drama in the world because science will choose to have their own set of dogmatic beliefs whether they want to believe that or not you know a, a good talk on that is by Rupert Sheldrake a TED talk which was you know con which was actually banned because of what he was saying which probably ran counter to what TED are trying to promote but he had a valid point that science material science we have to remember science is based on materialism is building their own set of dogmatic beliefs which they do see the world by they see the world through this lens though granted there are a lot of scientists out there who are open and who have that very pure scientific mindset where you don't come to a, a logical conclusion about anything where you keep an open mind and you are in a sense a an explorer you're an explorer of reality you're trying to learn as much as you can but probably you've come to, to the conclusion that you know knowing the reality of everything is is un, unattainable so you will see in discussions with you know even scientists with scientists where they'll get in a heated debate about a certain topic or their own personal beliefs on a matter based on some research they have up until this point and it does cause just a lot of drama in the world it it's because people in general are materialistically focused science is becoming the common religion for most people and this is worrying because when you have a materialistic perspective when your religion is science when your perception is concentrated on materialism then your eyes are polluted with the idea that the entire world is separate and composed of separate separate things and you in a sense are isolated from everything else around you so it's ironic that science is becoming the common religion for most people in the world and this is because most people in the world now have a general materialistic view of reality even a lot of religious people actually deep down have a materialistic view of reality they see things very black and white they see only the division of life they see only the objects of life they see only this and that and this is why science is becoming the religion of the masses and this comes from this materialistic perspective so this is what leads to a lot of conflict in the world and causes a lot of dramas in the world and it's ironic that the east seek to dissolve this idea of this and that and have a deeper perspective that the world is actually connected and not separate you are not isolated from the world you are actually part of the entire universe and this is their perspective from the deep contemplation of thousands of years of experiential research on oneself which has contributed for thousands of years down the line so eastern spirituality as opposed to science and the modern perspective of materialism eastern spirituality is focused on the peace and the freedom that one should and can experience in this world so science is generally based on everything that we can see but not what's going on within the inner world but in recent times that's changed in the last few hundred years that has changed where science are starting to understand that hold up maybe there's some validity to what these ancient traditions these spiritual traditions are talking about even though that must irk them to make that decision so instead of spirituality needing science to validate ex its existence it's the opposite science are looking towards spirituality to find the answers to a lot of these problems that are in a sense beyond materialist thinking and you have to sort of get out of this this kind of analytical left brain thinking and step into a much more rational sphere of thought so it's ironic in recent times that when we talk about consciousness or pure awareness 
all of these things that are very common within Eastern spirituality, which is the focus of most Eastern spirituality. Science is starting to pay attention and ask questions. And this has been going on for a, for a long time. Actually, there's been a lot of dialogue with people like the Dalai Lama in India for 40 years, actually, maybe longer than this, about consciousness, pure awareness, about a lot of these fundamental understandings in Eastern spirituality. And so you see this, especially in neuroscience today, you see a lot of this in neuroscience, maybe even cognitive science, and also, you know, obviously with quantum physics as well. When we look at these sciences, they're particularly fascinated with the idea of pure awareness, this, this idea within Eastern spirituality of a fundamental pure awareness or consciousness, if you will, that transcends but is also imminent within our experience. So they are truly fascinated by this knowledge, by this wisdom that the East provides. And there's a many books, many, many books out there on the moment, out in the market at the moment, where science are trying to understand if there is this pure awareness beneath this persona that we have. Is there an actual awareness that's not bound to the physical body, to the brain function, to our general cognition? Is there something beneath all of that? Um, and this is what truly fascinates science. And so science have kind of had to eat humble pie. And like I said, with the London University, they've had to look back and had to actually accept that, hold the phone here. These Eastern traditions have been studying this for thousands of years, so we need to pay attention. And that's what I actually like about some scientists out there. They, they're, they're okay to eat humble pie and admit, hey, maybe we're wrong here. Maybe there is this pure awareness which is beneath this sense of personhood. So in the end, if I, if I could say anything to, for example, to Sadhguru, I would say, you don't have to defend spirituality. You don't have to defend the great yogic tradition. You don't have to defend the spiritual process. They are complete systems in and of themselves. You don't have to try and validate your point of view to a rationalist like Javad Akhtar. You just don't have to do it. They are complete systems in and of themselves. And this is why I feel actually a lot of people need to engage in the art of no debate. I have, a, I have an episode of enlightenment today about the art of no debate. Rational people engage in debate. Spiritual people, especially people who follow Eastern spirituality, should understand that there's no point engaging in this sort of debate as if you need to validate your point of view. If you understand that these great spiritual traditions are complete systems in and of themselves, they have everything, all sorts of components within these systems, then you don't need to validate your point of view. We could just look at some of the great Hindu traditions where you have the health component covered, you have the nutrition component covered, you have the psychological component covered. They're complete systems in and of themselves. You don't need to validate your point of view. Always keep that in mind, keep that in mind. And when someone like Sadhguru or the Dalai Lama or all of these great people mention something like that, raise your hand and say, why do we need to validate this great knowledge to a system of thought, science here, to a system of thought that has only been around for a minuscule amount of time compared to these great traditions. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode today. And remember that you don't need to validate Eastern spirituality. Eastern spirituality has thousands of years of knowledge and wisdom, which goes beyond most cultures in the world, if not the oldest of all cultures in the world. So we have this knowledge base system and science are only recently, reluctantly starting to accept the East as an authority, especially on matters of the mind consciousness. And as I said, this mystery of pure awareness. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like, give her the thumbs up, give her a thumbs up. Make sure you turn on that little bell notification and make sure you subscribe because I want to make more of these episodes of ET and all of your love and appreciation keeps, keeps me fueled to keep going and keep working and keep pushing hard. So I hope you enjoyed and remember, you don't need to validate your existence to anybody.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mm-hmm.